like you have here standing before you a, a guy who's really well known in the comedy scene. This is Sam Polwart, who was like you many, many yonks ago. Well, he graduated three years ago. Three, four, but that's a long time. <laughs> and he's a wonderful, he's always been a wonderful student, a fantastic presenter, and always out there, ready to say something funny to make everybody laugh. A really, really engaging way of presenting. I'm really sitting the bar quite high. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that way. Remember you at the graduation? You oh, and Rima. Yeah. That was really good. So here we are. And I think he's a musician too. So there's a lot of talent. Sam really has a lot of talent. He was a good student as well. Not and a world traveler. And a, oh, yeah, and a oh, well traveled yeah. person. <laughs> and I'm not going to say anything more because I think you, it'll come out. And so. Tenakoto guys, uh, my name's Sam, uh, I am a relatively recent graduate, I thought I'd come here, um, I'm super relaxed in the way that I do my presentations, if you've got any questions or you want to shout something out, heckling is fine, uh, pretty much we're just here to, to have a discussion and I'd like that, this is not like TV, I will respond, so yeah just feel free, um, I didn't make this, I stole it off the net, there you go, good start. This is me, uh, Sam Paul, uh, comedian, musician, and CEO of Awesomeness. I did create a really cool presentation, but I upgraded to Windows 10, and I lost it along with about eight years of photos. Only realised that last night. I had to finish this one uh, at about half past one this morning. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes. I can't even remember what is on here, so let's just have fun. <laughs> Who the hell is this guy? A little bit about me. Uh, I grew up in Dargaville. Anyone know what Dargaville is? You like Coomera? <laughs> That's where we grew up. Uh, so I was a twin growing up there, went to Dargaville High School, uh, hated school, was pretty average at school, uh, was always into music, uh, you, I was that weird guy carrying the guitar around at school, uh, so the first thing that I wanted to do uh, when I left home at 17 was move to Auckland. I moved to Auckland wanted to join a band and be a musician, so that's what I did. I'm not saying I was hugely successful, but there was, uh, you know, six New Zealand tours, two albums, stuff on TV and radio. We saw mixed success, and that was the kind of beginning of my event management career. We were doing all our bookings, we were doing all of our tours, we were booking all our photo shoots. I had no idea how to storyboard a music video. Sat down for about five days and figured it out. Came out with a, a music video. It's all these things that put me in a scenario which I had no idea what I was doing at all. And throughout, looking back on what we accomplished and what we did within the band scene, uh, we were in the band for about seven years. A lot of what we did was right. The majority of what we did was wrong. So when I came to uni and started doing an event management degree, I had an advantage over students who hadn't done a lot of work within the event scene because I was able to look at what I was learning and think, not how can I use this, information or how can I use this data that I've been given all this all these new skills but I could have used this and so that was the difference between the way that I was processing the information that I was taking on board so it wasn't just rolling over the top going I can't envisage how I'm going to use this like sitting in high school doing algebra that same thing so this is story time how I ended up studying which I've kind of gone into um, studying for me was uh, it was a, a big move. I, uh, I was 24 when I came to start studying uni, um, so I was considered an adult student. Is there any other older people in our room for first years? How old are you? 24. Yeah! <laughs> you're going to get paid more because you're older, because when you go to interviews, people are going to be like, this is not a child. <laughs> so the rest of you, yeah, expect that 40k entry level. Um, yeah, so studying at, I chose Unitech uh, for two specific reasons. I was accepted into Unitech as well as AUT. Um, one of the main reasons I chose Unitech was that it was much more event focused, whereas AUT was much more media studies focused, and also Unitech had free car parking. That was, those were, I, not lying at all, those were my two things that made me choose Unitech. And because it's like a campus feel, and I could sit on the grass, and to me that was real cool. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how I got to Unitech. What am I missing here? Oh, that's pretty much it. 
these are some of the events that I've been involved in. Down here, uh, where should we start? This here is Waitangi's Family Celebrations 2014. This is where I'm currently working. This is for Auckland Council as an event. What is my title? Event coordinator or something like that. Um, <coughs> let's go back in time a little bit. Oh, I thought I had a band photo in here, but I don't. Uh, this one here. This is the label launch 2013. I was working for a company called Bravo Productions. Now, I need to back up a little bit here, because when I left uni, what did I do? I went and got pissed. That is what I did. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> that feeling of finishing up and finishing that eighth beer and just going, this is going to be a good night. It was a great night. The morning was terrible. <laughs> uh, so you get to that point where you've graduated, and then it's that... Uh, the beautiful thing about uni is you know exactly what you're doing for the next three years. And there's a comfort in that. Once you finish up, what do you do? Where are you going? How do you get there? It, you get right back to square one, where you are back in uncharted territory, like that first semester at uni. I got a job, uh, I applied for a whole bunch of jobs. Uh, I got a job working for Watersafe Auckland. As, it was a great title, the job wasn't that great, but the title was amazing because I was the Regional Promotions and Event Coordinator for Water Safe Auckland. Good title. <laughs> this is a not-for-profit organisation, so the majority of the events that I was working with and coordinating was um, community-based events where we were heading out there, we were putting some stalls up, and we were basically educating people on life jacket safety, water safety, um, and the, you know, all that information about drownings now, that reduced drownings within New Zealand. This was a really good entry-level role for me because it was familiar territory. I had done this stuff before um, and there weren't too many challenges involved. That was a six-month contract. I finished that up and went, oh crap, what do I do now? So back to that square one session again of applying for jobs. Uh, Lucy, who came in the other day, she's a good friend of mine, she said, hey Sam, I know a company called Bravo who are still looking for people. I worked with them while I was at uni, you should get in touch. I was like, that's awesome, got in touch started working for Bravo as a, this was a good title too, it's all about the titles when you're looking <laughs> on a CV, um, oh. an experience specialist, <laughs> it's a good title, basically I was a glorified coffee boy, <laughs> however with Bravo, Bravo do possibly the most high, the high end corporate awards evenings and they are perfectionists beyond anything I have ever understood what perfection is. It was absolutely just mind-blowingly frustrating at times. I'm talking, you're setting out chairs for a corporate evening, and each of these chairs have to be exactly in line with the others. Exactly the distance between the chairs must be perfect. Your stanchions that are roping everybody in must be perfectly spaced. And I'm not talking, you know, oh, about 800. No. 804, every single one, and he'd go through and be like, no, that one's wrong, and I was just like, this is, what is this, but we did these events, we did the labour launch, we did this one here, that's the town hall, um, this is the woman of influence over here, this is the uh, CPA awards, 2014, these are the top awards for the biggest companies in New Zealand, so when you are working on these events, they're huge, and the money that are going into these events huge. Um, just uh, We did a lot of events up at the Auckland Museum. Uh, that's where the CPA Awards here. Um, we also did the House of the Year series up and down the country. The Auckland Museum's event centre is 7,500 a day. And it's a three day event for one night. So that's just the money that you're looking at just for venue cost. You've got about $45,000 worth of lighting going in there. Like these events are massive. So going in there and learning how to be perfect, learning the expectations of my manager that everything had to be perfect and then having him come to me and go, we've got a major problem, I need you to fix it, I don't want to talk, tell you how to do it, you just need to fix it. And you're, in your mind you're going, oh my god, how the hell am I going to do this? But you've got to. And that is the role of events. You also need to understand that you will be working really long hours. This event here, 22 hour day. Woman of influence. 21 hour day. Come on in! You're not that late. Sorry. That's alright. I'm just talking about events. This one here, this is a 22 hour day. We're just talking about how amazing events is. <laughs> and also bear in mind that there's no union for events. 
So there's none of this. Some of our event companies are really great. And they're like, man, you work over 12 hours, we'll give you time and a half. Most don't. So you're working 22 hours, you're doing that three days in a row, are oh, you lucky if you get a day off? But that is just the role of, of how events are. So it is full on, and you need to go into it knowing that you will work weekends. What else have we got here? This is Matariki Festival. Anybody get involved in that? No, fantastic. That's working for Auckland Council. We had a team of three for a one month festival, uh, ranging anything from theatre productions to Matariki on the Move, which is uh, Auckland wide. Um, tour of a whole bunch of really, really talented artists, and I was in charge of that, I was production lead, so that was kind of that one. Uh, Southside Arts Festival, another Auckland Council event that I've been involved in, that's a four week festival which is happening in November this year. My first day working for Council, I was thrown into that festival, no briefing, no information, get in there, Here's how the event is running. Your stage managing the stage. Off you go. That is events. You will get thrown in the deep end, and that will test you on whether you can cut it or whether you can't. They'll give you heaps of support. People in events are wicked people. They're nuts. Absolutely crazy, but they're really good fun. But they also have really high expectations. So that was day one, jumping on Urban Asia. I completely and utterly screwed it up. I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I went in, I thought I was doing it right, but I just didn't want to ask questions. I just wanted to do it right and, and then go, man, he really knew what he was doing. End of that week, I had my debrief and my boss went, yeah, you really had no idea what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, that's fine, because you, you asked good questions. You didn't get it right, but you asked good questions. So that's, uh, I think I've got some information later about just information, helpful information of what you should do. Don't be scared to ask questions, just don't ask the same question again. <laughs> it's really important. What else have we got? Uh, this is Ariana Huffington. Have you heard of Huffington Post? Yeah. She started it. That was an evening with Ariana Huffington, an event I did with Bravo. Uh, the highest of stress for that event that was absolutely massive because it was such a big deal. This was primarily a huge um, yeah, there was huge pressure on us for this because that was partnered with ASB. That was down at uh, Viaduct Events Centre. So ASB were, yeah, we were getting massive pressure from them. And also, this is fully televised. So any slip-ups, any accidents that happen, if anything doesn't look right on TV, huge money in this event, it's our fault. So that's how it works. So Bravo, um, they specialised in a lot of the production. They didn't do the organising of the event, but they organised all of the lighting all of the backdrops, all of the stage. So they made the event look the way it looked, as opposed to the other side, uh, which is just organising who's coming in, what's the structure, uh, what's the structure of the night, um, all of those types of things. So now we're starting to look at the different types of event companies that we've got out there. One event company, some of them do it all, but they don't do the large events. So with Bravo doing this one, this one, these two, and Labour, we were a team of three. So everybody we brought in, all contractors. So we've got a team of probably 30 odd contractors for any one of these events, all working the lighting, the sound, the staging, just massive amounts of crew. So when you are the person on the front line, you need to know everything that's going on. So when a contractor comes up to you and goes, hey bro, is it okay if the stage is just a little off center? No, it's not okay because the cameras are here and here, and it's going to change the focus of, of how everything is designed, so no. And when you've only been in it, and you don't, you're not 100% confident to go in and make those calls, as opposed to going, you know, you know your boss wants it perfect, but for you to get in there and be confident enough to go, no, change it, it's not good enough. It's a little bit daunting, because these guys have been doing their jobs for a long time, and they will, contractors generally, will try to make it as easy as possible for them. They'll try and make the pack out as easy as possible, even if it means packing out before the event is finished. So that's as an event organiser or the event lead on an event, you really need to be able to put your foot down when it matters. Uh, this is my event. This is Last Lines. So I've been running this comedy evening for the last about year and a half. Uh, it's one week Monday if you want to come in and have a look. Um, this was a really interesting event. I did this because I did comedy for three years. I did comedy for three years because I finished up doing the band stuff and I still needed to get that hit from performing. 
I found a place in the comedy scene that wasn't hitting the mark. So I created a new gig. Now this gig doesn't work along the same lines as every other gig in Auckland, or New Zealand for that matter, which is an open mic, which is generally free, or um, Koha entry, and the comics don't get paid, and it's generally entry level scene. Other side of it, you've got a professional level show, where the audience pays to get in, and the artists get paid for their performance. This is a free event, which I pay the artists and I get professional artists in. This turned the comedy world on its head and absolutely just screwed up all of my chances of ever becoming a professional comedian on TV. Because the professional comics were like, no, you can't do that. The perceived value of comedy is that people have to pay for professional comedy. I pay my artists for their time, not their A-grade work. Everyone told me it would fail. Everybody. The younger comics was, thought it was a great option and a great idea and a great chance for them to really propel themselves up. Yes. So you don't get any profit from door sales, but you still pay them out of your own money. Is no. Correct? no. I get paid from the bar. Okay. So the bar pays me to put on the gig. I don't have to pay my comics. I could take all of that money because it's my time for organising and all my gear coming in. But I thought that's not helping the scene, that's not helping the new comics come through. And so I do it. And I, I earn about 150 bucks for putting that show on. So it's, it's not, it's 